The Russo-Polish War of 1654-1667, also called Thirteen Years' War, First Northern War, or the War for Ukraine, was a major conflict between Tsardom of Russia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Between 1655 and 1660, the Second Northern War was also fought in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Thus this period became known in Poland as the Deluge. The Commonwealth initially suffered defeats, but regained its ground and won most of the battles. However its plundered economy was not able to fund the long conflict. Facing internal crisis and civil war, Poland was forced to sign a truce. The war ended with significant Russian territorial gains and marked the beginning of the rise of Russia as a great power in Eastern Europe. Background The conflict was triggered by the Kamenitsky rebellion of Zaporozhye and Cossacks against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The Cossack leader, Bodan Kamenitsky, derived his main foreign support from Alexis of Russia and promised his allegiance in recompense. Although the Zemsky Sobor of 1651 was poised to accept the Cossacks into the Moscow sphere of influence and to enter the war against Poland-Lithuania, on their side, the Tsar waited until 1653, when a new popular assembly eventually authorized the protectorate of Ukraine with Tsardom of Russia. After the Cossacks ratified this agreement at the Pereyaslav Council, the Russo-Polish War became inevitable. Invasion of the Commonwealth In July 1654 the Russian army of 41,000 captured the border forts of Beli and Dorogobush and laid siege to Smolensk. The Russian position at Smolensk was endangered as long as great Lithuanian hetman, Prince Janus Radziwill, with a 10,000-man garrison, held Dorsha, slightly to the west. Cherkaski took Orsha, forces under his command, led by Nyas Yuri Byatinsky, forced Radziwill to retreat in the Battle of Shlov, fought near Shlov on August 12. Radziwill was again defeated 12 days later at the Battle of Sheplavitsha. After a three-month siege, Smolensk, the main object of the previous Russo-Polish War, fell to the Russians on 23 September. In the meantime, Prince Alexei Trubetskoy led the southern flank of the Russian army from Bryansk to Ukraine. The territory between the Dnieper and Berezina was overrun quickly, with Trubetskoy taking Ems to Slavil and Roslavl and his Ukrainian allies capturing Homel. On the northern flank, VB, Sheremetev set out from Pskov and seized the Lithuanian cities of Nevelpolosk and Vitesk. Thereupon the Tsar's troops swarmed over Polish Livonia and firmly established themselves in Ludza and Rezikna. Simultaneously, the combined forces of Kamenetsky and the Russian Boyar Bartolin struck against Vilnia. Despite many disagreements between the commanders, they took hold of Ostrog and Rovna by the end of the year. Campaign of 1655 In the winter and spring of 1655, Radziwill launched a counter-offensive in Belarus, recapturing Orsha and besieging Modulyev. This siege continued for three months with no conclusion. In January, Sheremetev and Kamenetsky were defeated at the Battle of Okmetiv, while a second Polish army crushed a Russian-Ukrainian contingent at Zhashkov. Alarmed by these reverses, the Tsar hastened from Moscow and at his instigation a massive offensive was launched. The Lithuanian forces offered little effective resistance and surrendered Minsk to the Cossacks and Cherkaski on 3 July. Vilnius, the capital of the Great Duchy of Lithuania, was taken by the Russians on 31 July. This success was followed up by the conquest of Kaunas and Rodno in August. Elsewhere, Prince Volkonsky sailed from Kiev up the Dnieper and the Pripyat, routing the Lithuanians and capturing Pinsk on his way. Trubetskoy's unit over Anslonum and Klesk, while Sheremetev managed little beyond seizing Belit on June 17. A Lithuanian garrison still resisted the Cossacks' siege in Steri Baikov when Kamenetsky and Baterlin were already active in Galicia. They attacked the Polish city of LWOW in September and entered Lublin after Parel Jan Sapia has defeat near Brest. Armistice 
The Russian advance into the Polish Commonwealth led to the Kingdom of Sweden invading Poland in 1655 under King Charles X. Afanasy ordered Nashchok and then opened negotiations with the Poles and signed an armistice through Sevilna on 2 November. After that, Russian forces marched on Swedish Livonia and besieged Riga in the Russo-Swedish War of 1656-1658, a theatre of the Second Northern War. Kamenitsky was not against this temporary truce and supported the Tsar though he warned him of Polish furtiveness. Campaign against Vyhovsky. Ivan Vyhovsky, the newly elected hetman in 1657 upon the death of Kamenitsky, allied himself with the Poles in Sept. 1658, creating the Grand Duchy of Ruthenia. The Tsar concluded with Sweden the advantageous Treaty of Valiezar, which allowed him to resume hostilities against the Poles in October 1658 capturing Winston T. Gosievsky at the Battle of Werke. In the north, Sapia has attempt to blockade Vilnius was checked by Prince Yuri Dolgorukov on October 11. In the south, the Ukrainian Vyhovsky failed to wrest Kiev from Sheremetov's control where Russians kept their garrison. In July 1659, however, Vyhovsky and his Crimean Tatar allies inflicted a heavy defeat upon Trubetskoy's army, then besieging Konotop. Change of luck The threat to the Russians during their conquest in Ukraine was relieved after Vyhovsky lost his alliance with Crimean Khanate due to Kosho Tarman Ivan Serko campaign who later attacked Chihiron as well. An uprising arose in the Sever Ukraine where Vyhovsky stationed few Polish garrisons. During the uprising pairs to Ukrainian nobleman Yuri Nemyrik who was considered the original author of the Hadyach Treaty. Together with the Uman Colonel Mykhailo Karnenko Serko has led a full-scale uprising throughout Ukraine. The mutinied Cossacks requested Vyhovsky to surrender the hetman's attributes and re-elect Kamenetsky's son Yuri once again as the true hetman of Ukraine. Both forces faced off near the village of Hermanuka. There the rest of Cossacks deserted Vyhovsky and rallied under Yuri Kamenetsky. While Vyhovsky was left with the Polish troops and other mercenaries, a council was gathered with participation of both sides where the union with Poland-Lithuania was proclaimed unpopular and due to the rising arguments and threats Vyhovsky has left the meeting. The council elected Kamenitsky the new hetman and an official request to surrender the power was sent to Vyhovsky who had no other choices to comply. Russian forces stunned at Konotop tried to renegotiate a peace treaty on any terms. However, the change of powers within the Cossack Hetmanate reflected the amount influence of the Russian foreign policy in Ukraine and reassured Voivode. Trubetskoy. Trubetskoy invited Kamenitsky to renegotiate. Advising by Starshine not to rush it Yuri Kamenitsky sent out Petro Doroshenko with an official request. Trubetskoy, however, insisted on the presence of the hetman to sign the official treaty at Pereyaslav. Arriving there Kamenitsky discovered that he was ambushed. End of the war. The tide turned in Poland's favor in 1660. Polish King John II Casimir, having concluded the Second Northern War against Sweden with the Treaty of Oliva, was now able to concentrate all his forces on the Eastern Front. Sapieha and Stefan Zarniski defeated Korvinsky at the Battle of Polingar on 27 June. Then, Potoki and Lubomirski attacked VB. Sheremetev in the Battle of Kunau and forced him to capitulate on 2 November, after persuading Yuri Kamenitsky to withdraw on 17 October. These reverses forced the Tsar to accept the Treaty of Cardis, by way of averting a new war against Sweden. Towards the end of 1663, the Polish king crossed the Dnieper and invaded left-bank Ukraine. Most towns in his path would surrender without resistance. But his siege of Lukov in January was a costly failure and he suffered a further setback at Novgorod Seversky. The Commonwealth did defeat Korvinsky's forces at Vitesk in summer 1664. 
Peace negotiations dragged on from 1664 until January 1667, when civil war forced the Poles to conclude the Treaty of Andrusovo, whereby the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth ceded to Russia the fortress of Smolensk and Ukraine on the left bank of the Dnieper River, while the Commonwealth retained the right bank Ukraine. In addition to the territorial changes from the war, this conflict sparked major changes in the Russian military. While the Russian army was still at semi-standing, mobilized seasonally, this conflict moved it along the path toward a standing army, laying the groundwork for Russian military successes under Peter the Great and Catherine the Great.